when it comes to traveling, there's a lot of terms out there that maybe you're not familiar with. And today I wanna to talk about one and uh, you'll be surprised, but it's sex tourism. What exactly is sex tourism? Is this something that uh, that's fake? Does it really happen? We'll talk about that when the video returns. It's not a game, it's a ranch Hey guys, David the Ring here. Welcome to No Frontier, this is your travel platform. When it comes to all things travel here, it's my job to encourage people to get out there to create their own experiences and to form their own opinions because as I know, more exposure leads to expansion. Sex tourism, what exactly is it? So I'll begin by kind of giving a soft description of what it is. I'll also talk about some players that are involved. And also I'll talk about maybe how the business has gotten infected during the COVID, you know, period, during this COVID period over the last year and a half or so, uh, I'll go into that. So first thing first, a description of it. When it comes to sex tourism, I'll say it's pretty much where you have one party or a group of people who actually go somewhere for the purpose to um, pretty much engage in like a sexual ex exchange, right? And so usually when the average person wants to go on a vacation, what is the one thing that they say they wanna experience? It might be the weather, they might say they have this activity that they wanna check out. They, there's all these different things, but people that engage in sex tourism, that's usually their first or second reason. Even if they don't tell other people, that's usually the reason or the motive for going, so, right? So let me tell you some players that's involved. Now, before I tell you some players that are involved, I'll say this is not the totality of what the country has to offer. And I'll also say that most countries in the world engage in some type of sex tourism one way or another. And um, the ones I'm just mentioning is just like on larger scale where you hear the name much more in terms of sex tourism. So, and when we, t when we look at Asia, for example, let's just say Thailand, let's say the Philippines, let's just say Vietnam. When we look at Europe, we're gonna say the Netherlands, you know, Amsterdam, and I'll just put Germany. Now, I don't think a lot of people yeah, hear about Germany that way, but Germany has a red light district, so that's why I'm just mentioning that. Uh, when we look at uh, Cent uh, Latin America, Let's talk about Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela if you want to, and DR. So these are the ones where you really hear, especially guys wanting to go for that purpose. So they might start off going solo and then bring a duo and a whole group of people. Now, later on, I'm gonna tell you how I think um, the people in this sector, a lot of women, they kind of give the country free advertisement. So I hope I remember to tell you how that works. But I just wanted to name some of the players that are involved in, in the sector. I will say that in some places, it is legal to do so and there's it's illegal to do so. Now, in a place like the Netherlands, I would say it would, it, it's legal and most likely the ladies, I don't know, whatever guys are involved in the sector, they have a license and they probably pay taxes on it and whatnot. In most places though, it's illegal, right? But, big but, it's still looked the other way. The authorities look the other way, why? Because tourism in general brings a lot of money to any country's economy. That's not, there's no country that says they don't want tourism because you always want outside money coming in because you might be a country that's so poor, you might be a country with no natural resources that you can export. So the best you can do is, all right, you know, people are coming to see the people as well as go to our beautiful beaches. Whatever nice things that we have here, we'll let people come and enjoy and they'll pay us for it. So th that's, that's pretty much how it is. So every country wants tourism. 
Now, when you have when you have when you have these people engaging in it, and this is why I said the women are like free advertisement, because they're driving people to the country, which is why you know the authorities are looking the other way. Because like I said, every time you have one guy go to Brazil and then he tell 10 friends and then they come and then they keep spreading the news, hey, this is the place to go, the women are beautiful, it's so cheap over there. This, if this is the information that's being brought back, then it'll keep multiplying the people that want to come and experience the place. I also say this, because this episode right here is not about a moral thing. I'm just sharing information and just telling you how certain things around the world work if you're not familiar with it. Think about the one lady who is in this sector. A lot of times they can be providing for upwards of like 10 people. They're providing for themselves, their parents, their children, their uh, uh, just a bunch of people, their friends, they're helping people out. Right, so during COVID, when everything got so hard with uh, testing, whether it, uh, there was some type of uh, curfew, a lot of people, like even myself, would say, "Hey, let me not even go through all of this, all of these hurdles to actually get to this place. Let me just wait it out." Now, those people can't, like, a, a lot of well, people in a first world can kind of somewhat hold up right but if you're already in a poor place and there's no there's hardly any opportunities you can't hold out that long that is the major difference between the first world and a, and the third world in the first world like as you saw there was a lot of stimulus checks given you know during covid as well as unemployment in the third world you're on your own in the third world pretty much is 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 the environment where the government as well as the private sector not enough is done to be able to meet people's basic needs that's the difference no matter how poor you are in america you'll still have access to shelter food clothing and opportunity because you can always move to another place that's hiring right now everywhere is hiring there's signs all over the place um, even in my business, it's hard to get people. Right now, a lot of people don't want to work. But there's, there's signs everywhere. In these places, that's not the case. Uh, let me know people out there, if you're from a country where you've never seen a for hiring sign up, tell me the country down below where you're from that you've never been there and saw a hiring sign on the outside. And tell me where you live here in America if you ever seen a place, whether you went to go eat somewhere or whatever, and it said, we're looking for people, we're hiring. I would love to see that, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. So, this is a big part of people's economy. Sometimes tourism can make up 20 to 40% of people's GDP. So that's why uh, the authorities will look the other way. And also, it kind of helps everyone at the same time. If this person is getting money from this foreigner, there, some of that money is going to be spent on the, the family and the family is going to spend it on things that they need at the grocery stores, buying gas. So the money goes very far when it comes from the outsider. So got to think about all of this uh, when we're talking about this topic. So let me know what you guys think below. I can go much deeper in a part two. In a part two, I'll actually talk about uh, certain ways that it actually works. But in this video, I wanted to give you somewhat of a description, some of the players that's involved and how their business, if you will, got affected during this time period. All right, so David Durang, No Frontier, see you in the next one.